Hi, George here. And today we're going to be doing a panorama here from these five images. And I took this out at the Calico Ghost Town, which is out in Southern California. Fun place to go and visit. This was done on a Civil War reenactment weekend, which is why there's this cannon sitting up here. Now, when I make a panorama, I try to overlap my images by up to one half of the image. There's a lot of overlap. And that just helps Affinity Photo to find where the match is. And I'll show you where this is. Notice we have a little building right here. And the same one is right down there. So if I take those and kind of line those up, that'd be right about like that on those buildings. A bit of a perspective shift in there. So we kind of compensate for that. It'd be up here somewhere. This picture is almost the same as that picture. Not quite. It's a little bit in here that is additional. So I'll put that one right there. This picture then comes in at just about just about right like that. And then the final picture here comes in right around in there. Those three are pretty straight. This right one actually goes up a little higher than this in the final panorama, kind of like that. Now I took these handheld. I wasn't using a tripod, anything like that. And I was just making sure to get a nice large overlap as I went. So there's plenty of image in there to compare between image to image so that Affinity Photo can actually stitch these together and make a good panorama out of that. Okay, we have our five pictures. Let's now go up here to File, come down to New Panorama right here. You then add in your photos, click on Add. And I have my five right there. She's open. There's the five images. Notice that it's not adding them from what's on the desktop or in the program. It's adding them right from a folder. Once you have your pictures, you can choose in here to use or not use different pictures. It's up to you. When you're ready, click on Stitch Panorama. Is then going to put those together into the one panorama. And here's where it figures out the overlaps and so forth. You can see there it is. Pretty flat across here. That was that one picture that had a bit more on the bottom showing. And this one's up higher, left-hand side. Worked out pretty well. So choose OK. And there's our new panorama. I'll just close down everything else in here. Let's get rid of these things. Just get those out of the way. We no longer need any of that stuff. And there's one more in behind here. We'll get that out of the way. So there's the Final panorama. Now, obviously, we're missing a lot of stuff up in here, and we're missing a lot of stuff over here, left-hand side, along the edges. You can see how the pictures were kind of rotated a little bit to get the panorama look. Notice that there's a bit of a curve right here and a bit of a curve right down here. So the panoramas were actually stretched a little bit and adjusted perspective-wise to get the best lineup possible in here. Now, to take care of these areas, this is actually very easy here. But first, let's finalize this. I'll click on Apply. And there's the final panorama. And we're back into our regular editing space. Let's now select these transparent areas over here, left-hand side. And what you want is the Flood Select tool right there. And up here where it says Contiguous, uncheck that. Tolerance at zero, that's fine. I'm going to change this just to just a tolerance of just two, just to help smooth out any edges for us. Current layer, that's all correct. Click into a transparent area, and this should now Choose all of the transparent areas in the whole picture and going in just a hint into the non-transparent with that tolerance. So that takes care of any little softening of our edges. And we can have Affinity Photo automatically fill this with content from the image. And it's called in painting. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Go up to edit, come down to fill. What you want here is in painting. That's the option right down there. Leave all these things at the normal settings, choose apply, and there you go. So what Affinity Photo does is it goes in and looks at the content around that area and then creates new content from that to fill in those missing areas. And it did a real nice job. The sky looks great up here. Looks pretty good. Bottom left-hand corner over here. Right-hand side, that looks perfect. I'll do the control D to deselect. I think the right hand is okay. Let's just zoom in and make sure yeah, but I don't see any problems over here. What you're looking for are things that are obviously duplicated and could cause a problem. I think this rock here is from that rock there, but it's not noticeable. So I'll leave that all alone. Looks good down through here. That's just a tent down. They can ignore that. Okay, right over here, it's a little bit odd right in there. I think we can fix that a little bit, although it's not really a problem. And the left-hand side over here, this actually works out pretty well, even though I can see where some duplication was happening. Kind of duplicated in here. This is from up here. This thing here is from right in here. 
This bit is obviously from here and also over there. So there's a little bit of duplication happening in here. The bushes all look good though. So we'll just do a little bit of adjustment in here, just kind of hide some of that obvious duplication. So we'll start on this side and then we'll get that other thing right there as a last step. And for this, I'll use the clone stamp tool. There we go. And all we have to do is just take a little stuff from around these areas and put it back onto that area just to hide any obvious duplications. So in here, I'll just take some of this dirt right here, hold the Alt key down, select that. And let's just paint in some of that right down in here. There we go. That kind of changes the look enough. Same thing down here. I'll grab from right down here, Alt click. And let's just paint a little bit of this up into here. And then a bit of the bush down. And that should hide that pretty well. Looks fine. Over here, same idea. I'll just grab some of this stuff right here and bring it in on top of that so it has a different appearance. And maybe change the outline a little bit of that. There we go. Now on this thing in here, that's pretty obvious some of this stuff is being copied. We want to get rid of a lot of that. I don't see any good match in here. I'm going to grab some of this bush over here. Just alt click, grab some of that and bring that in. That's a lot different and that should help. And just a bit more of that bush. Again, just kind of messing things up in here so that it is difficult for the eye to see what's going on and confuses the eye and that hides any of those problems. And that looks just fine. Okay, let's just go to the right a little bit. There's a bit of this fence post thing here showing up right here. I don't want that here. So let's just copy some of this bush over here. Alt click and just drop that in like that. That solves that just a little bit more. Okay, that's good. And then over in here, just right down there, I'm just going to copy from above here, move it just straight down below. And that should be all that we need here. Let's get that lined up better. And there we go. That is all fixed. Okay, so now zoom back out. And that's control zero. And there's our finished panorama looking great. And as you saw, very easy to do here inside of Affinity Photo. And if you like this video, make sure you click on that like button, click share. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these future videos. And if you want to learn more about how to use Affinity Photo, take a look at my complete training course for Affinity Photo. And I have a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.